Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Well, who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. This is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers coming to you with my pearl handle pistol cufflinks, very graciously given to me as a birthday gift by our content genius, Michael Rivers. Today we're reacting to a little bit of Better Call Saul, and this is kind of going to be a whimsical episode, and I'll give you a couple of war stories. Uh, but before we do that, this is brought to you by... Esign.com. Esign.com. Esign.com is an effective way to remotely do business. Let's say your grandma's in a nursing home. You're there at the nursing home with her. You don't have the documents, so you can't just go like this with grandma's hand, right? Uh, because she's unconscious. So, and grandma's wealthy. So, what you do is you call the lawyer and say, Can you e sign a document to me? You download the app and you get three free signatures a month. And then you, you send the document over, you, you e sign it, and before you know it, everything's good. I use it all the time for retainers, but you can use it for just about anything. Esign.com, very effective way to get business done quickly. Okay, let's talk about Better Call Saul. I, you know, I, I see in the comments all the time, Better Call Bruce. Love it. I love it. I fucking love it when you guys say that. Better Call Bruce. Here's the difference between me and Saul. Saul, I, I, first of all, I love the show. So, first of all, let's just talk about Bob Odenkirk, who I just absolutely love he was a writer on saturday night live and which i was been my favorite show ever since i was 12 years old he has got an incredible sense of timing he's an incredible writer he's an, i think he's a very good actor and i just absolutely i wasn't a huge uh breaking bad uh fan i didn't really start watching it until the end and then uh but i started watching every single episode of better call Saul. why because I'm a lawyer. And I thought one of the funniest lines in the, the whole, whole thing was when he got his law license and his brother said, giving you a law license is like giving a monkey a machine gun. Um, so we're going to react to uh, a scene and we'll talk about some uh, war stories. In the court today? Yes. And could you point him out to the court, please? Okay. So first of all, that is that is very common. I mean, one of the key elements in any kind of criminal case is identity you know uh, you know did you see the person who shot you yes i did did you see him clearly where was that person what was your was your view unobstructed uh what did the person look like do you see that person in the courtroom uh your honor may the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant and that's what they're doing here so that the witness has identified the defendant mr Seiki. thank you mr harkness your witness, Mr. Goodman. Thank you for coming in today, Mr. Harkness. I just want to clarify a few things from your testimony. If that's so the lawyer that just asked the questions was obviously the prosecutor, and he's identifying uh, the defendant. And now it's cross-examination. So, and generally you don't walk up to the to the um, witness like this. I mean, you, you either stay at counsel table or you're at a podium, one of the two. Is that correct? Got in at noon, left at midnight. That's a long day. Mm -hmm. Good for you. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a hard day's work. So you say, I mean, Nothing wrong with a hard day's work. I mean, it's, you're kind of, you got this folksy style, you're, you're relating. Man, and he reached across the counter and, uh, quote, he grabbed up the money from my register and run off. Now you see that? You got the jury on the one hand. I mean, the, the, the courtroom scene is super realistic. And even the questioning seems very realistic. Yeah. And there was no one else in the store. Not at that time, no. And so and this guy seems very credible. I mean, he's a store owner. He's there, and he sees the guy, and he identifies him. And so when you have a direct examination, direct examination is open-ended. So what did you see next? And they tell a story. Cross-examination, you're testifying, basically. You're... you're you're controlling with questions. So you make the witness just basically say yes or no. And since the camera system wasn't working at the time, you're the only one who saw the perpetrator. Yeah, I guess so. This person came in and they bought something. I think it was an Almond Joy. They bought an Almond Joy. And when you rang them up, that's when they snatched the cash from the register. But you say you got a good look at them, correct? Yes. You must drink 
stronger coffee than I do because after 11 hours on the job. Jackson, Your Honor, argumentative. And it was dark out and he was right up in my face. You feel confident that you can identify this person. That's what you're saying. I can. Absolutely. It's him. Are you sure that's the person? There's no doubt in your mind. Take your time. Are you ready for the other shoe to drop? I don't need time. That's him. Now, would you be surprised to learn, Mr. Harkness, that the person you just pointed to is not the defendant? What? <laughs> so this is parlor tricks. And parlor tricks don't really go over too well. And my client is in the back of the courtroom. Mr. Sakey, would you please stand up? Objection. So the person you ID'd is named Hollis Early. He's a bartender down in Berlin. He has a very good alibi for the night in Your question. Your Honor. Ma Mr. Goodman. Objection. Oh, oh Mr. Goodman. Really? You didn't recognize him either, Your Honor. All right, settle, settle down. Now, honestly, that would probably be grounds for a mistrial. You'd have to start all over again. A judge probably wouldn't take too kindly to that. Um, but it is it makes for great TV because it's like, oh, yes, he didn't really uh, know who he was. Um, but my guess is that unless you found somebody that was that close of a match, the judge would, would know that that's not the defendant sitting in the chair. And so when you do stuff like that, I mean, first of all, let's, talk, let's analyze that in terms of professional responsibility. You have a duty to render candor to the court. And so you're not being honest by having somebody else sit in, you're perpetuating a fraud, really, trying to make people believe that that's your client sitting in the defendant, sitting in the defendant's chair, when really your, your client is in the back of the courtroom. So my guess is that, you know, it, it does skirt the ethics quite a bit, and it would it would be... Um, grounds for a mistrial, I would think, but I, I've never seen that happen. I can tell I can tell you one thing though, I did have this happen in court, and this was fucking hilarious. So, and I and I, I don't want to say it was hilarious too much because the person that uh, the prosecutor is why will be watching this, I'm sure. So I, I'm trying a case; it's a murder case, and. Um, the guy is going to come in and say that my client admitted to doing the murder, which they didn't really need anyway because we weren't we weren't um, disputing that my client shot the other guy because it was a gun battle between two people, and you know whether he sh he was there and shot wasn't an issue in the case. But she gets this guy and uh, the guy says I'm not going to testify. I'm really afraid and I'm not going to testify. And the judge says, Well, you've been responsive to the subpoena. I'm going to, but you're, and you're here and you have to testify. Are you afraid to test? Yes, I'm very afraid to testify because of this kind of case. Okay, well, if you're not going to testify, I'm, I'm going to hold you in contempt, but I'm going to keep you in jail until either the end of this trial or until you testify. And the judge actually could have put him in, in jail for 30 days, but he, he was sympathetic to him, and so... He goes into jail. That lasted all of maybe an hour, hour and a half. Because, you know, clanging door therapy has a way of uh, having an effect on people. He gets out of jail. He uh, comes back into the courtroom. And he decides to testify. He gets on the stand. And uh, what's your name? And, and the, do you, uh, were you at a party on June 11, 2009? Um, well, yeah, I was. Um, did you see somebody named Chu at the, uh, at the party? Well, yeah, I saw you. Um, now, here I'm thinking, wait a second. She's never, I, I, I remember the discovery, you know, the, the police reports about this witness. She never had him identify him, like in a photo lineup or anything. So I'm waiting for for the next shoe to drop. Yeah, I saw Chu at the party. What did Chu tell you? Well, he told me he did the murder. <laughs> and then he says, well, do you see Chu here in the courtroom? No, he ain't here. <laughs> the reason he decided to testify is because all of a sudden he realized he didn't know anybody in the courtroom. So, however, he, he got, you know, into this situation where they thought this was the right chew, totally backfired on him. And the prosecutor was just beside herself. And then when the jury came back with a not guilty, she stands up and just storms out of the courtroom, all pissed off. 
That is a great moment. And then the judge let him go directly from the courthouse, uh, from the courtroom. A lot of times they have to take him back and process him, you know, and the judge says, no, I'm not going to authorize that. I have no hold on this defendant, so I am not going to authorize you taking him back to jail. He can leave right from here. And that's what he did. And that's, I mean, that's just awesome, you know, because that's, that's, that's the law. You know, you don't have a hold on him. So I've, I've lost jurisdiction once they said not guilty. So I just love Better Call Saul. I just, some of the things he does are so ingenious, you know. I mean, that, that uh, Gil, the director of, of this and, and Breaking Bad, I think he's just fantastic and the writing is, is, is so clever. But as you remember, uh, Saul, as, as he gets on later in life uh, and gets in with the cartel and starts taking a lot of money from the cartel, all of a sudden really gives the government a reason to fuck with him. And that is not what you want to do. Wise lawyer always said, if uh, somebody's got to j- go to jail, make sure it's the client and not you. So this has been our reaction to Better Call Saul with a war story mixed in. We'll see you next time here on uh, Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers. Make sure you subscribe. If you don't subscribe, we don't grow. If we don't grow, we don't create this great content. So and this is just kind of a whimsical episode. So if you have any kind of other... Uh, ideas from Better Call Saul that you want to see me react to or other movies or any other ideas related to this kind of content. Uh, we're all ears because we want to make sure you guys, your, your needs are met. <laughs> this is Bruce Rivers again. Subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, sign up for Patreon, and we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23 hour lockdown, please is that my god.